Welcome to Designer Digital's bi-weekly tip, June 14th, 2019. This week, how to whitewash watery photo masks in Photoshop and Elements. Katie Bertit's watery photo masks are a simple way to give your digital project a softly painted effect. One popular way to use the masks is to recolor them white to use as a layering element. In just a few clicks, the masks give the subtle effect of a white swatch of paint behind a photo or embellishment grouping. As with most things Photoshop, there are a number of ways to whitewash these professionally designed images. Here are several ways to get this effect. Choose the method that feels most comfortable to you with your own workflow. Each watery mask download comes with an ABR brush file, that's a Photoshop brush file, in addition to the PNG image files of each of the masks. To use the PNG version of the watery photo masks, begin by opening a piece of digital paper or a project that's already in progress and a mask in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Get the Move tool, which is the first tool at the top of the tools bin, and drag the mask onto your background paper. Make sure that the mask layer is selected. It will be highlighted in the Layers panel. And then press Control u or on a Mac system, Command-U on the keyboard. This will activate the Hue Saturation dialog box. When this opens, drag the Lightness slider all the way to the right. This removes the color of the mask, leaving it white. Click OK to accept the color change. Above the Layers panel, locate the Opacity slider. Drag the slider to the left to decrease the opacity and make the wash as transparent as you would like it to be. Another shortcut for recoloring the masks uses the foreground and background colors. Let me go ahead and undo all of the changes that we've made. To use this method, locate the tool bin on the left side of the screen and check the color chips at the bottom of the bin. It will be two little chips down here at the bottom. If the colors are not black and white, with black on the left and white on the right, then press the letter D on your keyboard. This stands for default, which gives you the black and white color chips. Select the mask layer in the layers panel, and then locate the lock transparent pixels icon. Now it's going to look like a little checkerboard. Toggling this on by clicking it tells the software that you only want to affect the portion of that layer that has the image visible. It won't affect any of the transparent pixels. You'll know it's activated because it places a little lock icon on the right side of the layer in the Layers panel. Press Control Backspace or on a Mac system, Command Backspace. This fills the layer with the background color which we had already set to white. Now let's talk about using the ABR brush version of the file. I'm going to go ahead and delete what we've already done so we can use the brush. Begin by loading the ABR brush file into Photoshop or Elements. You can refer to the video tip on this topic if you need help with this step. It will walk you through the process of loading the brush file into your software. Next, open a digital paper and then create a new blank layer by pressing the Create a New Layer icon in the Layers panel. It will look like a little square with a flipped up corner. It may be above or below the Layers panel depending on your software. You want to remember to do this step because you want to do any brush work like this on its own layer. It will save you a lot of time later if you want to make any changes. Next, change the foreground color chip at the bottom of the tool bin to white. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either click on it and choose white and click OK or you could have just clicked on this little uh, bent arrow here to reverse the foreground and the background. Choose the brush tool from the tools panel 
And then in the tool options, which will either be at the top or the bottom of your screen, depending on your software, choose one of the watery photo mask brushes. Just click on the new blank layer to apply the brush in white. Because the image is stamped on its own layer, it can be resized, moved, or deleted independent of anything else on the page. You can also reduce the opacity or change the blending mode to blend that wash into the background. So you can drag down the opacity slider or you can change the blending mode here. Any of these methods will create a whitewashed block that can be creatively layered into your design. You can make it bold by leaving it at full opacity or create a more subtle effect like we did by reducing the opacity or changing that blending mode. Thanks so much for watching this week's video and be sure to check back in two weeks for another Designer Digitals tip.